Country Forum today being brought to you by Banner Payson Medical Center, George Henry Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, Asher Service Cleaning and Tree Service, ITD Group Computer Services, Anytime Fitness, and Hospitality Wireless. Four minutes past nine o'clock, 82 degrees, it's Friday, and you know what that means. Yep, telling us all about what's going on at the Sawmill Theaters and a whole bunch more. It's your hometown movie guys, minus one. Tina and Andy in the station with us this morning. Craig down at the theater, busy taking care of all kinds of stuff down there. So uh, he'll be back with us again next week. And in the meantime, uh, we're just uh, glad to have you here this morning on Rim Country Forum. How y'all doing? Glad to be here. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> uh, 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 I, I'm fine. I guess. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and follow that one up, Andy. Oh, yeah, the smokes. Yeah, follow that one up. I don't know what to do with that. And, and uh, Tom Holland. Tom Holland, okay. Tom Holland? No, well, yeah. he's, he's being obscure. We'll get to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, now we've got uh, uh, lots to tell you about. Uh, uh, certainly, one of the things uh, that we just want to hit on real quick here at the top of the show uh, is the Summer Kids movies are at the Sawmill Theaters on uh, Mondays and Thursdays, Mondays at 10.30 in the morning and Thursdays at 10.30 in the morning. And uh, let's see, this week, uh, uh, or this coming Monday, the July 1st, Over the Hedge uh, playing at 10.30 in the morning. And on Thursday the 4th, uh, we've got uh, Kung Fu Panda. And again, this is a great chance for the kids to go down there. For just five bucks, they get to see the movie. They get a uh, small drink and a small popcorn, and uh, something fun for them to do during uh, you know the, the summer vacation. Now, Randy, you've uh, you've got a passel of grandkids. Uh, have you seen Kung Fu Panda? Uh, no, I have not. That's, well, it's one that I have not gotten to yet. Well, that, they'll get you to it. <laughs> is that right? No doubt about it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, really? uh, yeah, and it's probably the younger you are, probably the funner it is. But uh, uh, Jack. Black is the voice of uh, Kung Fu Panda. Ah, He's great. kind of a, a, a great big roly-poly, uh, pretty inept guy at uh, his adventures. It's pretty fun. Sounds like a good time. Everybody was Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. I'm that on goes, this that, morning. That I'm goes on. back a few yeah. years there. What about Over the Hedge? I'm not, uh, I don't think I've ever even heard of that one. Uh, another uh, very successful uh, children's movie. Well, very cool. Again, Mondays and Thursdays at 10.30 in the morning. Great chance for the kids to get out there and, and enjoy some uh, fun. Now, uh, now, going in reverse order with things that have been playing for a while, Aladdin uh, with uh, Will Smith uh, still playing at 1, 4, and 7. No, this is, uh, this is one of the movies uh, that is showing currently that is uh, solidly profitable. All right. People, people like this one, and uh, Tina, you've seen this one. I did, and Tell I us really, about it. I loved it, and particularly I loved Will Smith. I thought he was just snarky and funny, and and you know, playing a blue snarky genie, really, really good. Just, right. just lots of funky scenes that adults who have watched the silliness in Hollywood. Uh, probably will enjoy some of his sort of pokes at that. Uh, and yeah. he always, uh, and when he plays those uh, snarky uh, type of it's characters, good. which he's done a few times, I mean, it's always entertaining. I think yeah. he's got some some giftedness when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah, and and otherwise than that, the uh, the guy who played Aladdin was perfectly serviceable. However. Um, I don't... Perfectly serviceable. You know, de decent. Um, oh, okay. okay. How was the princess? Oh, the princess. Let's see, here's the thing. The princess had a much stronger um, persona. Mm -hmm. And the the guy who played um, Aladdin was uh, what I would maybe on PC call a soy boy. He was kind of, uh, you know, kind of wimpy. Kind of like, a little... You know, maybe even light in the loafers, not really, but I mean, yeah, I was wooing the princess, however. You know, she was. There's she a was lot of great terminology. She was in charge, <laughs> and I, I'm like, dude, we need a little bit of a stronger, you know, maybe even some, quote, toxic max masculinity. Yeah, we'll unquote. take a testosterone pill or something. There you go. Come back yeah. and see us later. Yeah. Well, and. Uh, but, the, but the music. Oh, the music is, is heavenly. And that's still the same music from the animated yeah. movie, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, did they actually re-record that, or did they just use the same recordings? Do we know? I don't know. I turn to you for answers. Yes, I know. I <laughs> turn to myself and have no. Well, speaking of music in movies, uh, there's another one that I know, uh, uh, Tina, that you really like that's still playing. It's rated R, so this is for the adults out there. It plays at 115, 415, yeah, and, and 17. Only for the adults. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's really. uh, Rocket Man, the story of a musical fantasy about Elton John's breakthrough years, and hey, there's a lot of uh, adult uh, topics in there, but boy, a lot of great music. Oh, I mean, it, it, with Elton John, you, you can't go wrong with music. He's just got so much. And 
it's it's really worth seeing. Um, you know, if you compare the two that have come out recently, were Bohemian Rhapsody and Rocket Man. Right. And it, I mean, I, I I have to confess, I I liked Bohemian Rhapsody better, but Rocket Man was really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't realize Elton John had had such a challenging childhood. Yeah, there, yeah, there's definitely something going on there. Yeah, yeah but I, that, I, I've is, loved his music for a long time. Yes. Yeah, is that kind of a general uh, proposition that we can say about uh, geniuses? That uh, you know, there seems to be a lot of them that have had, uh, as Tina puts it, a challenging childhood. Well, sometimes I think you know, yes maybe some no, of those tough times, can... the things that we have to work through to get through these <coughs> tough times, sometimes you know, takes us to a higher level. Make us tougher. Yeah, there you go. Well, but or, you know, go back to, to or in this uh, case. Johann Sebastian Bach, <laughs> one of the great geniuses, uh, and yeah. he was a happy guy. He had a happy family. Right. He had happy kids, and he made happy music. Right, and then of course we could uh, you know flip that coin and talk about Mozart. Oh. Which was not quite the same the kind of story. Poor tiny Mozart. Yes. Ah, yes. yes. But the guy was playing amazing music at what, like the age of four or something. Oh my like goodness! That. Yes, and I, you know, and then the movie Amadeus, of yeah, course, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, uh, also, also yeah. well, uh, solidly profitable. Really? Yeah. You know what we're at right now on uh, on uh, Rocket Man? Yeah, sure, of course, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> what are we at? <laughs> okay, uh, they built it for forty million. Right. And by the way, uh, among the producers uh, is uh, Elton John himself. Right. Uh, and uh, to date, uh, they have brought in 157 million bucks. Mm. And by my reckoning, uh, they've got about approximately 30 million dollars to put in their pockets on a 40 million dollar investment. And and this is not at all uh, the end of the story for this one. It's going to be in the movies, in the theaters for a while longer. Right. <clears throat> and then. DVD sales and all of that. Uh, there's all that stuff. They'll have to edit out some of the stuff for uh, uh, TV, but probably. Uh, Who it'll, watches it on TV anyway? I do. I still. I, <laughs> you, you, you know, I, in, in, I, I, in TV English is class, high tech for in, me. In English class, we talked about things being boldlerized. You know, that's that's mm -hmm. where they took Shakespeare and they took out all the juicy bits. And uh, you know all of the classics. They, they, some guy in the Victorian time, you know, they they excised all the juicy bits. But the only thing I watch on TV is the Diamondbacks. Oh, jeepers! Go D-backs. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, also another great movie that uh, is still playing and uh, that is, I'm sure, as Andy would say, solidly profitable. The Secret Life of Pets 2, rated PG, good for the kids too. Plays at one, three, ten, five, twenty, and seven thirty. How's this one doing? This one is doing super. Uh, it is another of the of the ones that is uh, profitable that is in the theaters this week. Uh, Eighty million to build it and two hundred million. Uh, in revenues. That's so, not only super, that's super duper. Yeah, they uh, they did fine. Uh, and uh, this is a uh, very, very popular, it's PG rated, mm -hmm. which is the the calmest, uh, most benign, non-threatening uh, uh, rating that there is. No, no, no. Other no. than G. There's G, and Toy Story is G, remember? Which I saw. Mark it so down on your calendar. Yes. Andy has been corrected. Oh, <laughs> it'll never happen again. Yeah. Well, now speaking of things that need to be corrected, <laughs> um, excuse me, uh, people out there in Radio Land, I'm awfully sorry. You abase yourself yeah. and do and do amendments. It, yeah. it might have been a, a mini stroke or something that happened there. <laughs> but uh, it's a very very cute movie. Uh, I, I expect I'll be seeing that uh, later on today. Uh, and uh, uh, it's what your pets do when you're not at home. Oh man, uh, I've been thinking about setting up a camera just to find out something. We had the, the one dog that was the real <coughs> child that way uh, has since passed away. Uh, but uh, uh, man, I mean, we, were, we wanted to set up cameras because this dog was just a sweet little puppy the whole time we're home and when we left it was like Godzilla came in and stayed in the house for a while or something. Oh man, you need chows. Yeah. Chows are the zen dogs. My yeah. dogs sleep all day and then when I come home they wake up and they're grateful. Well, this was actually a chihuahua, not really a dog. That's so. not a dog. That's right. <laughs> That's an order. <laughs> little, 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 little pocket puppy, yeah. Hey, also, uh, uh, another movie that, uh, you know, was one of these that, uh, you know, where they, they have a big win and so they make another one and it's a big win so they make another one and this one seems to have fallen a little bit more flat. It's uh, MIB International, Men in Black. This is the third installment, I believe, in that series. Fourth installment. And, uh, is uh, it a hit? 
Or a miss. <laughs> Swing and a miss, strike four. <laughs> so how did it do? Uh, not too good. Yeah. No, uh -uh, that's, it didn't get good reviews. Uh, people are not going to see it. See, it doesn't have Will Smith. It, it doesn't have Will Smith. I mean, honest to gosh. It, yeah. do, it does have Thor, but, uh, yeah. you know, he, uh, you know, People are, are not in, not enthused about this, so uh, no. they're they're still underwater on this one, right? Uh, Underwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of underwater, one of the one of the great disasters of all time was Waterworld. And oh I, yeah. Oh my God! So I remember that. And that was, that, an ex cost that was an expensive movie. Oh, oh God, yes. <laughs> it who, just who went was crazy. Who was the director? I don't remember. Somebody, Somebody who never worked again. <laughs> 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 he was never seen. Yeah. Uh, but it, but it was really it, dreadful. Oh, I liked it. I thought it was fun. You've um, seen it on TV with all the bits cut out. You know, my husband watches stuff, and he watches stuff that I don't want to watch, and he fast-forwards it, uh -huh. and he says, you know, I could get through it in about 10 minutes. It's good. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, so but it, it took them uh, yeah. 22 years, I think, to make their money back. <laughs> so yeah. now on this Men in Black... They, they, mean they actually made it back? Yeah, they did eventually, eventually yeah. Geez. On this MIB International, how much did they spend on this, and how much did uh, they attempt to generate? 110 in, 187 out. So, so they're not uh, even breaking even yet? Uh, not yet, but I mean, this isn't going to be like an epic fail or anything, but uh, they're, they're certainly... Not nearly the epic win that they had with some of the previous It's going to lumber along. Yeah. You know? Oh, good. Good word usage there. Lumber along. And it's not even naughty. Yeah, sorry. Lumber humor there. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> You're not trying very hard. I'm trying to both the, way you, the way you started off the day. <laughs> All right. Hey, we have to take a fast break. When we come back, uh, you know, in today's uh, Pace and Roundup, Angie's written a, a pretty interesting review on the next movie that we want to talk about. Pretty interesting. Well, oh, know, for heaven's sake. I, I stayed awake through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you more about Toy Story 4 coming up after these words. Honey, who can we get to clean our Oh, Actually, all I read was the headline, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be honest with it. I, it's been a busy morning at the Radio Run. <laughs> I missed the thing about the flags. What, what is this happening? Oh, that was uh, uh, Kim Ross. Uh, yeah, uh, they had made a little gift to us uh, brought a flag out because ours was tattered. And, and uh, they're going to be uh, out of the park on the 4th of July handing out flags. I was really kind of miffed. Uh, you know, I've, for the last few years I've been emceeing the... Uh, with discounted rates for seniors. Golly, and tape is still rolling, so let me see if I can edit this. Um, the last few years I've been uh, emceeing the Memorial Day thing at the park, and, and uh, she wanted to be out there uh, handing out flags to people at the park, and was told, no, this isn't about promoting business. And then I thought that was kind of short sighted, so I'm glad to see that she's going to be out at uh, Green Valley Park. And I really I like Kim Ross a lot, and she's a very sweet guy. Yeah. It's a darn good realtor, so you need a realtor. I'm going to think about Waterworld. The problem I have had with Waterworld is the fact that everything in that movie, in reality, could not have been accomplished in a Waterworld. Oh no! It's just where, did they, where did they get the ammunition? That, that, that might have been one of the problems that they have. So it was just, it was just complete nonsense. The whole thing. Absolutely. Every, I mean, like every, every bit of it was nonsense. Yeah. So Is that how long ago it's been? 1995? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Time flies when movies suck out. Yeah. Yeah. Melting, that, up, melting up the polarized tools. Yeah. And then he came out with, um, I, don't know, I forget what the, the uh, order was, but the, the postman. Mm -hmm. uh, postman. Which, which, which I, I also like. In fact, I really like the postman. Uh, and it was also yeah. a Waterworld was about the melting of the polarized gas? Yes. So that, 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 that. they should do a sequel with the Casio Cortez. question answering right Sorry, I have to say that. No, 20 no. Seconds. Go Kim, Kim Coates was in that, and he's in a Netflix movie. It's about the Montreal Mafia. He is mesmerizing. I didn't realize he'd been around that long. So he's, this was the guy that invented it. The guy who played the general in Post Here we go. Three, two, two. One. Welcome back to Rim Country Forum. It's uh, 18 minutes past 9 o'clock, and we're at, excuse me, 19 minutes. Uh, time flies when you're doing commercials. Oh, yeah, 83 sure degrees does. right now, and uh, looking for a high today of uh, 96 fun-filled degrees here in Payson. Give you a look at today's forecast coming up in about 10 minutes, so stick around for that. Meanwhile, this morning, talking with your hometown movie guys, or at least two of the three. Uh, again, uh, Craig couldn't be with us this morning. He's got some big epic stuff going on at the Sawmill Theater this morning. But
But um, meanwhile, uh, Tina and Andy with us in the studio here, and we're talking about stuff playing at the Sawmill Theater. And one of them, as I mentioned before the break, that uh, there's a really great review in today's Pace and Roundup that Andy did about Toy Story 4. And this is that movie that, unbeknownst to Andy, is actually rated G. And uh, thank you. <laughs> when a new toy it's called your level, Andy. <laughs> when, a new, when a new toy called Forky. Uh, joins Woody and the gang. A road trip alongside old and new friends reveals how big a uh, world uh, can be for a toy. And real quick before we get to the movie, I saw a great, uh, and we posted it up on KMOG's Facebook page, I think, yesterday. A great little interview uh, with Tom Hanks, and it's a BBC interview. He's over um, across the pond there, and, and uh, they're talking to him. And he's, he was talking about how it's, it's amazing how many times he'll be at like a hotel or something and walk into an elevator and uh, uh, the uh, like a mom with little kids sitting there, and, and look, kids, it's Woody, it's Woody, and they look up at him like, uh, "Hey, Woody, this is some guy." <laughs> and, and and he says, "Okay, you know, come on, come on, just close your eyes for a second." They're like, "What? Close your eyes!" And so the kids reluctantly go, "Okay," and they close their eyes, and all of a sudden he starts talking he like Woody, the and movie. and they uh, open up their eyes, and all of a sudden they they get it. Um, but it's a really cute little interview. Check it out on Facebook. But meanwhile, this Toy Story, obviously, this is another one of these things where Pixar, uh, who just seem to be repeatedly uh, knocking the ball out of the park. Um, this is the fourth iteration of Toy Story, and um, according to uh, Andy here, uh, well worth the price of the ticket. Oh, this is just super. Really? Just, yeah. this, yeah, yeah. just super, I mean, nothing else? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just a, a terrific... If you're British and you want to say it's absolutely fabulous, you say it's not bad. It's not <laughs> bad. Okay. And so, you, you know, come on, Andy, it's not bad. Yeah, uh, $200 million to make the thing. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I saw it on Friday, and then I borrowed uh, a friend of mine's grandkids and uh, went to see it on Sunday as well. Uh, both both performances were absolutely packed. Really? Yeah. And, it's great. Uh, I, I, the first time I saw it, I, I was a little little braver the second time, but the, uh, I had people with me that knew me. <laughs> but <laughs> so, but the, the first one, I just bawled through the whole thing. It just, just Through Toy Story? Yeah, just cried and cried and cried and cried. Are you, you can seek counseling for this, or is it really stuff? Is it really an emotional uh, movie? I didn't realize Toy Story. It's very sweet. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. The, yeah. There, there's there's two. Uh, you know, if you're a grown up, and the the story is a uh, some toys get lost and then the other toys find them. You know, it's pretty much like the first Toy Story. Yeah, pretty much like all of them. Yeah, like all of them. But. Uh, but Different iterations. Um, yeah, but yeah. the the if you're a grown up, and that's fine, you know, if you're four, uh, and it's a it's a great movie, you know, if you're four and you go see this movie, and oh look, Forky's lost. Oh, I Forky. hope they I hope they find them again because the little girl, uh, I don't know, two or three, she's very young. Mm -hmm. uh, she no no, she's going into uh, kindergarten, so she must be five. Right. Um, uh, she's attached to this toy that she built herself out of rubbish. Little wow. garbage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Trash. Yeah. Plastic fork cool. and, and a pipe cleaner. So yeah. He's so adorable, little uh, forky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he gets lost in the other the other uh, toys bound together uh, yes. to find them. For but for grandpa age people, uh, it's about the kids that grow up. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they're not they're not there anymore. They'll go around and they're not there. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Just, that is kind of strange. Spent yeah. I think we still have some boxes of toys sitting around somewhere that no one's played with for a few decades. Yeah, but for, I mean, for the grandpas and grandmas, uh, you know, the, you spend you spend all this time raising your kids at a horrible expense and it turns your hair white and, and you get used to it and then you turn around Is and. Is that what happened? That's what happened. And your eyebrows and your beard? Uh, before I had kids, I didn't have any of this. <laughs> uh, and then, and then they're gone. That and then they're right. gone. And that's that's the theme of the of the, yeah. right. the the thing. And and then there's another theme. <clears throat> and I'm a. He's gonna start crying again. I'm a I'm a sucker for true love. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. And there's this other theme of uh, the the, the uh, conflict between uh, passion and and duty. Oh, there you go. I there, mean, there always I mean, seems to be underlying morals uh, with these uh, Toy Story movies that you have to kind of appreciate. Well, and thank heavens for that. So yeah. It's to counter. Well, some yeah, of because the other some of the other there garbage there. out there that really is, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I mean, it's it, it, it was for me anyway, and I think for uh, 
any any sensitive adult watching the movie would have would feel the same way. Well, there, there. <laughs> well now on a on a completely different note. Wait, uh, don't, don't go away from Toy Story. Oh, you're, you're not done I with it? it. Yeah. Okay, really? I, I also. And yeah. did, did you cry too? No. Um, I, I don't know. You're, I probably, don't, you're, probably, you're kind of grumpy. You probably laughed at people's no, misfortunes. No, no. I mean, I, you know, I don't have kids, but I've taught school, so I have right. so many kids that have come through my life that right. are, you know, I keep thinking of them as little, and now they have kids. Good grief. Um, That's one of my challenges here, having lived in Payson for so long. I know. I have people that come up to me, and they're like my kids' age, and they're like, you know, knocking on 40. And uh, and the last time I saw them, you know, I was like their t-ball coach or something. Right. And they come up and say, hey, how you doing? And I'm looking at them like, I know I'm supposed uh, to know you, but I... Yeah. <laughs> they have kids in their own. People stuff. would just please, when you come to see me, wear a name badge or something like that. So I can't. <laughs> and then maybe like a little background. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so give me your bio ahead of time. Right. No, but it is, all kidding aside, I mean, it, it, it is, it, it's amazing how yeah. how quick we, we grow. And, and uh, as in Andy and I exemplify a gray and... Yeah. Yeah. And age and, and yeah, become well, gravitationally know, challenged. I would be things. gray, but I, you know, I, 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 I bring it into compliance. Only her hairdresser knows for sure. Yeah. Right. And one of the one of the great movies of all time is uh, Casablanca. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And yes. in Casablanca, the theme in that is this same tension. Yes. Uh, between duty, duty and passion. And passion. Mm. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's it's every bit as as poignant in in Toy Story. Mm -hmm. Wow, very interesting. Yeah. Woody, Woody and Bo Peep. Yes. Woody, Woody, and, Bo. Woody, and, Woody and Bo Peep and have, yes. have, have been eyeing each other through, well, four movies now. <laughs> and Bo Peep, I think, is a, a significantly more sophisticated than Woody. Yeah, although that gal's lost her sheep. <laughs> she's very, she's really, really, and it happens during the course of, of uh, events in the movie. It's a, a kind of a little sub theme there. Uh, yeah. She's very concerned about her sheep. Yes, mm. yes. And her, her, and her sheep, sheep are so funny. Yeah, and they have names yeah. which we didn't know before. Yes. Wow. Uh, so the, the onion just keeps unpeeling here. Yeah. yeah. Billy, goat, and gruff. Uh, <laughs> her sheep's names. Wow. That was pretty creative. But really, Radio Land out there, go see this movie. Take well, obviously, yeah. take, obviously, this is still take, a big hit, just like beautiful. the three before. It's a lovely movie, it really is. Oh yeah, and the um, the theaters, both both performances that I saw were absolutely yes. jammed to the rafters. Wow. Yeah. And of course, you know, kids out of school right now, good time to take them down to the theater and enjoy that. And I, you know, I have to say, having seen a couple of the other Toy Story movies with my mm -hmm. grandkids, I found those to be entertaining. I, I mean, I enjoyed watching mm -hmm. them. It wasn't like some of these that I mean this is rated G but there's still a, enough uh, you know humor there targeted towards the adults and stuff to keep you laughing and enjoying it and obviously as, as you both have mentioned there you know some great morals to the story and things that you know kind of the, the writing must be good to keep you gripped like that yeah that's a good thing it really is now again uh, with a, a mm -hmm. profound contrast to story <laughs> Toy Story. <laughs> oh, this this Lex Dixie is terrible. Anyway, uh, um, Lex Dixie. Yes, I know it's dyslexia. I said Lex Dixie. Um, you that, did? Yes. Oh, see, I'm dyslexia. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, Annabelle comes home. Um, the possessed doll is locked in the attic room of the Warrens' home, but Annabelle awakens the evil spirits. Uh-oh. This one's rated R, plays at 130, 430, and 730. What do we know about this one, other than it's a horror movie with another one of these dolls that comes to life and is really creepy? Yeah, well, we do know a little bit about this. Uh, the, of course, this is the Annabelle series. It's it's a, uh, a doll slasher movie. I, it's how I would... It's a Chucky yeah. squeeze. Yeah. yeah. And we're not talking Chuck E. Cheese. Ooh. No. Uh, uh, they made it for $27 million, which is quite a bit of money for a movie of this sort. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, last night they did uh, $7 million in a uh, Thursday show. Uh, Sing a single night. Single night, yeah, wow. early opening. So there obviously is a market for this. Yeah, there is. It's a, a kind of a, a niche market. It, it'll do, uh, probably when it's all done, it'll do 50, 60, 70 million, something wow. like that, which is just fine. I mean, sure. these, guys, these guys will make this movie in you know 60 days or something with the uh, well the 27 million dollars is getting up there usually a lot of these movies anyway are made for around 10 right uh, but uh, two two things of note here uh, there are various uh, outfits out there that uh, kind of uh, conglomerate 
um, or let me aggregate ah. is the word I was looking for that aggregate uh, uh, the thoughts of uh, movie reviewers and also of uh, the movie going public and the <coughs> the reviewers uh, on uh, Rotten Tomatoes count this as 67 percent fresh really which is not at all bad that's a that's a good rating for them and, and the um, uh, the people that actually seen the movies that they interview as they come out of the theater, 73% positive. Wow. So for people that like scary movies, this is a top-notch scary movie. Interesting. And, and I, you know, again, uh, uh, different strokes for different folks. I know that there are people, I know my daughter and my uh, and her daughter both love to go get the bejeebers scared out of sure. it. They like going to a horror flick and I just, I don't know. Yeah. I, to me, I've... I've seen enough horror live in person. I don't really need to revisit. But, I mean, there are a significant number of people that, well, that enjoy these, which is is why they make them, mm -hmm. and they're they're generally uh, they're generally profitable uh, enterprises, which well, which means you know keeps the keeps the thing going. Got to be a reason to keep making them. Yep. And we have a special, unusual Tuesday opening. Oh, this coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. Yep. And what's the, that going to be? The second of July. This Tuesday that happens just a few days from now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Spider-Man: Far From Home. Ooh! Ooh. I I can't. Move. My what yeah. a tangled web we we. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh! I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, but I I am psyched. I can't I can't wait to really? see this. I can't wait to see this because uh, a good deal of the movie is set in Venice, oh. which. That's, oh. that's is, a good backdrop for any movie. Which is yeah. where I left my heart. So yeah, I left my heart oh. in. Uh, yeah. Anyway, oh, um, yeah, yeah. so anyway, the uh, again a lot of great things playing at the Sawmill Theaters. You can always go online and uh, just go to sawmilltheaters.com and find out what's playing and when it's playing. And you can also give them a call at 602-377-0719. Now we have to take a quick break. Get you caught up on today's weather forecast, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about John Ford movies. We're going to talk about the Avengers Endgame, too. Oh, the Avengers. Yeah. That's coming up uh, pretty quick here, right? Yeah. No, we already had it. <laughs> and the first Saturday. But, the first Saturday. And the first Saturday of the month. Yeah, so, so why are we talking about the Avengers Endgame? Well, do we have to go to a break? Uh, yeah. Okay. Andy wants Talk to you when we get back. Okay. And one of the other things we're going to do, we're going to try and stump the experts. Got some movie trivia for these guys. We'll see how that goes. I hate it when the chumps get stumped. <laughs> <laughs> this weather is being brought to you by Rim Country Power Sports in so, Valley. Your okay. knowledgeable Rim Country Power Sports. <coughs> so there's, TVs, there's nothing with uh, Avengers Endgame that's going to be happening or anything, but you just have something you want to talk about. Friday, June 28th. I'm Sunday just trying to follow, make sure I understand where you're going. Uh, winds and pace are there gusting around 20 there is news. an hour with our high experience to reach there's 96 new, degrees. New news. Higher winds on top Seriously? of the rim. Yes. Will be Stop the, the presses! There. And our well, slow them down. Yeah. 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 Roosevelt Lake, your high on this yeah. Friday, 108 degrees. Oh, yeah. 108 degrees down the time of the day. I hardly wait to get back home there. We'll take a look at your seven day forecast coming up right here on your information station. And a bunch of others yeah. for other stripes. Yeah. Yeah. Producer yep. and producer. I was trying to say, well, I know that the guy who played the general in the basement yeah, is a professor of acting yeah. at universities. Oh, and he played the general in what movie? Uh, postman. Really? Yeah. Now, what's that guy's name? I can't remember. Oh, I'm oh, trying to remember. I, the general of Postman. Yeah. And he was a professor of. Of, no. of acting no. or, no. or films or something. Or drama. Or something. Yeah. 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 So a couple of women that could have had that title. Center. And healthcare right here at home. Uh, Will Will something, I think. Will, yes. It was serving Will. the Red Country for over 50 years. And I love him. He's, he's a, he's a really good... Fully loaded vans are on show. Technicians have completed background checks, wear uniforms, and drive vehicles with our... 1997. Call us at 928-474-5037 or stop by our showroom at 204 South Beeline Highway in Payson. George Hendricks, Heating and Cooling. Will Patton, that's right, yeah. Yeah, we'll and, he, and he's a welcome back to Rim Country Forum. It's uh, 27 minutes now in front of 10 o'clock, 84 degrees here at the Radio Ranch. And this morning, as we do on Fridays, talking with your hometown movie guys, Tina and Andy in the studio with us this morning. And now, uh, just before the break, there uh, we needed to revisit the um, uh, Avengers Endgame. Yes, they said there's new news. There's new news. And uh, by the way, that's another one that made me weep. Really? Oh yeah. 
gee, many Christmas. There's a there, <laughs> there, there's a scene there's a scene between Iron Man and uh, Pepper Potts uh, that will just rip your heart right out, throw it out the window. Wow. Yeah. Is that the new news? No. Okay. The new news. <laughs> the, the new news is Andy's crying again. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Well, you know. Uh, uh, art should have, should affect you uh, yes. emotionally. Sure, right. sure and, should. You know, yeah. and, the, and if it does, I that's not... I cried at My Fair Lady. Did you? I did. Yes. Hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. Huh. I know. I got, I got through uh, Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies without crying. <laughs> I often cry at the box office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if you go to the valley. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, these uh, the the latest numbers I have. Uh, the the biggest grossing movie of all time is Avatar. Hmm. Two million seven hundred and eighty-eight million. Two billion. Two billion. I'm yeah. sorry. Two billion seven hundred and eighty-eight million. All time high. All time high. Right. Uh, Avatar. I'm sorry. Uh, Avengers. Endgame, two billion seven hundred fifty-one million dollars. Still in the theaters. So that could be the new new number one here. Could soon. be the new number one. I was thinking it was going to take forever to top Avatar. Well, it took a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, and not quite there yet. But the uh, uh, the producers of uh, Avengers Endgame are re-releasing it with some additional footage. Hmm. Oh, well, that sneaky, sounds interesting. Boys. So that'll that'll smarty smarty yeah. boys. Yeah. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. So that'll uh, you know th that'll attract certainly the fan base. Sure. Will want to come back and see it just to get that you know that extra three minute clip. What did what, we miss from before? Yeah. What it, whatever it yeah. is, and uh, probably me too. Mm -hmm. I mean uh, the the Avengers series and. Uh, some other uh, movies, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, for instance, and uh, uh, the uh, Deadpool movies, <coughs> are are so good in terms of the uh, the writing and the acting and the direction that you can see them again and again and again, and very often you will learn uh, new uh, new little subtleties that uh, you missed the first time, or for me, uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy, that you miss. Like the first eleven times you see, <laughs> uh, because you know there, there's, there's a, a lot going on. There's a lot going on, yeah. Well, you know, I think it's interesting. It's actually brilliant. That, I mean, a movie that was that successful that they, you know, they're going to put in a few scenes that they hadn't shared before. I mean, talk about squeezing every last little bit of juice out of the wine press. I mean, that that makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now, uh, um, and this, does it, if, if, in terms of olive oil, is I mean, the first squeezing is the virgin. And the second squeezing is what? The marriage. <laughs> Sorry, I asked. Whoa, oh, you're catching up. Uh, <laughs> and if corn oil comes from corn and, and olive oil comes from olives, where does baby oil come from? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> Good segue. Far from home. Uh, young Spider Man. Yes, Spider Man is still a teenager, of course. He never gets to be uh, out of high school. Mm -hmm. uh, and he goes on uh, some kind of a trip to, uh, to Europe uh, with his chums, uh, including uh, singer Zendaya. Ah, okay. I'm not, probably not pronouncing that right. Uh, but she plays MJ mm -hmm. uh, in, in this one. She played MJ previously, too. Uh, uh, but Tom Holland returns as Spider-Man. Oh, good. And this comes out, don't forget, comes out on Tuesday. This next Tuesday. 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 Yeah. Don't forget that. So Sharpen is, is, your pencils and get ready. And yep. this is, is going to be another you know, big smash, I'm sure. Oh. Uh, I, I hope so. Uh, I hope so. Spider-Man yeah. Spider a good character. and uh, he was, uh, He's this, my second favorite superhero. <laughs> Tom, uh, Tom Holland is just terrific as uh, a, a kid who... All of a sudden, you know, he goes from kind of a high school, you know, fifth ranker to uh, being Spider-Man. And he, of course, he's you know, 15, 16 years old. He doesn't know how to handle it, and a lot of a lot of funny stuff goes on there. But he's he's brave and he's earnest. Uh, Marissa Torme, one of my very favorite oh, actors, Academy Award winner, yes. plays uh, Aunt May. She got the Academy Award for My Cousin Vinny. Oh, which is well deserved. Another another movie that well, I will watch. Every I will watch it. I know every, every line from now. I know every scene. I know uh, that movie yeah. by heart. 
<laughs> we agree. Yeah. Well, now, one of the things that we, you all wanted to talk a little bit about this morning is uh, John Ford. And uh, you know, you've already, uh, off, off mic here, you mentioned a couple of stats that I didn't realize how many movies uh, John Ford was involved with. And he, and he also used to be a stuntman. I never heard that before either. Yeah, oh, well, I didn't know that. Back in the early days, he was a stuntman. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So how he's, many movies all together? He's the ninth oldest guy to win an Academy Award, too. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's it's like a baseball stat. It is. He's the ninth, yeah, the he's ninth the, oldest guy yeah, no, yeah. To, yeah. to ever get put and, out on second place. You know, when I looked place. him up, I saw 51 movies, and then Andy just went, no, 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 no it's over 100. Wow. Yeah. Uh, 100, he directed 140 films. 140? Yeah. yeah. But get this, his first movie was The Ten Commandments. Oh. 1923. So that's the pre-Charlton. That, I don't think I ever saw that one. No. Uh, I, 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 I'll, probably not. I'd be it's curious a, it's a to silent, see. Silent, yeah, silent, silent movie. movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be yeah. curious to see how they did the parting of the Red Sea uh, back in 1920. That would have been a, a pretty yeah. uh, a tough uh, yeah. special effect. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's a bit interesting to yeah. dredge that up, see if we can see that. Uh, but, but back in those days, in the, uh, in the, in the 20s, they made what they call uh, two-reelers. Right. And they were, by our standards, you know, they're very short movies, you know, 40 minutes long, maybe something like that. And they, they made zillions of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, they made them, they made them like crazy because it didn't take any time to make them, you know. It's a, well, and that was the public uh, entertainment. There was no TV. Yeah, there was no so, TV. You know, people, and even, people went to even the movies radio. all the time. Well, right. and that was back in the days, too, where we had uh, double features right. and then you had the newsreels and uh, all Correct. that kind of stuff in between. And, and uh, cartoons. And yeah, cartoons. cartoons. Yeah, cartoons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people but, went to the movies. No, that, that was, that was before that. Yeah. yeah. Because this was black and white days, right, yeah. right at the beginning of, of filmdom. So yeah. I guess, you know, for a nickel, you could go to the movies and, uh, you know, I don't know how many you'd get to see, but yeah. you'd get to see a bunch of them. You know, it's interesting to think of what it had to be like when the first uh, talkie came out, when there was actually audio dialogue in the movie. That had to be, you know, a big revelation for a lot of moviegoers. And then I, I, I often wonder about what it had to be like uh, to, uh, to go see uh, The Wizard of Oz when it first came out, and it started like every other black and white movie, but then yeah. they get to Oz and all of a sudden it's in color. Mm -hmm. Talk about an eye dazzler. That had, right. to, be, that had to be a mind blower. For well, and if you watch Singing in the Rain, that story is about the transition from silent movies into talking uh -huh. movies. You know, the, the, he, the, some of the silent characters who were magnificent on screen, the camera loved them, when they talked in their squeaky little uh, voices yeah. that weren't very uh, they, cultured, they, couldn't, they couldn't, weren't like stage actors. Couldn't oh my make God. the transition. Yeah, they couldn't make the transition. Mm. Yeah. But fortunately, uh, we have, have uh, W.C. Fields in May West. Oh, yes. Go oh, away, yes. boy, you bother me. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I didn't realize, 140 some films, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. but, but um, as I say, you know, a lot of them were these uh, movies that they made probably in two days. Uh, and uh, he just made a, a lot of them in, in the early part of his, his career. I wonder if there are actually still any of those, are, you know, I, I bet a lot of those all, just all, disappeared. Almost, yeah. almost, almost yeah. all of them have uh, yeah. vanished. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and then you look at the, you know, the major movies, the, the significant ones. I mean, he, he has such a body of work. The 51 that I was looking at, I think, were the ones that people actually know about, such as The Searcher's Stagecoach, The Man Who Shot Liberty Balance, The Quiet Man. Mm -hmm. Um, and she wore a yellow ribbon and Grapes of Wrath. That was huge. Wow. And uh, he's, uh, Henry he's... Fonda was one of his favorite actors and was in quite a few of those, including one of my favorites, which was Mr. Roberts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very poignant, beautiful uh, movie. He's, he's really, uh, I think, famous for the wonderful, wonderful westerns that yes. he made. A lot of John Wayne movies. Yes, a lot of John Wayne And there was a number of them that were shot up in Monument Valley. And there's, yeah. a, there's no place quite as iconic yeah. as far as your, you know, cinemagraphic backdrop as uh, Monument mm -hmm. Valley. I mean, it just uh, it just oozes Old West. Yeah. But he, he got his um, uh, his Oscars for Best Director. He got a bunch of Oscars for other things, too, for yeah. being a producer and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's he got four... Uh, Oscars for for Best, for Best Director, yep. none of which were westerns. Really? Yep. Yes. But we have a caller. We have let's, a caller. Let's let's get Don't the caller the before call. we lose oh, the caller. There you go. Yeah. Hi, you're on Room Country Forum. Thanks for calling. <laughs> Hello. Hey, no problem. <coughs> John Ford, uh, 
I read Maureen O'Hare's book, Tis Me. Right. Oh, it's yeah. a great read and stuff. And of course, you know, she's with a lot of movies with John Wayne and stuff. But uh, I guess after filming The Quiet Man, they both thought the other was mad at the other one. And really? They were led to believe that and stuff. And what it was, uh, John Ford pitted them against each other on the set to get acting ability and reactions and stuff out of them. And so it wasn't until they went to the Academy, and uh, I think Quiet Man was up for an Academy and stuff, that they saw each other again months after completing the film. And one of them said, well, are you still mad at me? I was never mad at you. I, I was told you were mad at me. They <laughs> uh -huh. looked at each other and simultaneously said, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Regularly, to get re like I said, acting ability and reactions and stuff out of his actors and actors. Make, make all the, the acting actually that much more believable. Makes sense. Well, you know, I know years ago here on uh, KMOG, I think this was back when we were still out in Star Valley, I'd ask the question of, you know, your favorite movie of all time. We've done it a few times over the years. And uh, at that point, the, uh, the favorite by leaps and bounds, uh, just no, nothing scientific, but by those who called in, uh, was this movie called The Quiet Man with uh, uh, John Wayne. I, I had never even heard oh, of it, and so afterwards I, I had to go rent that movie and I had to watch it, and I have to say, that was, I mean, a, a really good movie, but also not the, you know, I, to me John Wayne was either stereotypically in, uh, you know, in, in the saddle in a western, or he was, you know, in a, a jeep in, a, in a, a military movie or something, and this was a, a real departure from any of that as far yeah. as that stereotype. It's a beautiful movie. Yeah. 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 And, uh, after uh, seeing the rushes uh, for uh, The Quiet Man, uh, John Ford made the comment, you know, the big guy really can act, can't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and, thanks for the call, buddy. And uh, to uh, reinforce what the caller said, there, there's a, uh, a scene in The Quiet Man where Reno Herrick and John Wayne go at each other hammer and tongs mm -hmm. and it, it lasts for a long time mm -hmm. it is not it is not little you know some little 30 second clip I mean, you're, you're kind of feeling the tension then oh no they're screaming at each yeah. other oh, okay. just they are they're just and it's extended yes they're I, I mean they're really really involved in, in <laughs> it, it has it's a complicated thing having to do with the way uh, Marriages in uh, in Ireland were arranged, uh, right. and, and it, it's it is absolutely terrific. And I didn't know uh, uh, what the caller mentioned that John Ford had uh, uh, kind of enhanced uh, the performance by pitting the the actors against each other. That it really worked, and I think Tina will agree with me. Yes. A little bit of genius there, as yeah. far as just pulling that emotion and the yeah, reality. Sort of diabolical of that. genius and yeah. stir up trouble, get good acting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. 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 So, and uh, that was uh, John Ford got uh, an Academy Award for that. Yes. Uh, and how many Academy Awards altogether? He got four for Best Director and one for Best Picture, and then Andy, I think there were others. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how many alt altogether. Maybe uh, maybe eight or nine altogether mm -hmm. for various things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when did he pass away? Nineteen seventy-three. So yeah. it had been a long time ago. Wow. Yeah. But the his first. Uh, uh, Academy Award uh, as a director uh, was for a movie called The Informer. Yes, oh really? my God. And every every one of his uh, uh, his director uh, Academy Awards comes from very very intense, uh, complicated, uh, heartbreaking dramas. Yes, uh, except Quiet Man, I think was. Yeah. was funny, but there was a lot of heartbreaking well, stuff in it, there, too. Yeah, but The Informer is just, everybody needs to see that. I'm not seeing that. Fantastic. I'm not sure I've even heard of that. Uh, another John Wayne movie, and I'm going to have to go see that. No, no, John Ford. John, John Ford, Ford movie, excuse me. Yeah, you. John Ford, and I, I can't remember who was in that. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, the people to, people that I've never heard of. Look it and, up. Uh, so. Most of them had funny names. Funny names. Hmm. Like us? Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Uh, it's, the, the setup is that... Uh, a kind of a, a dim bulb sort of a character that the uh, the leading character uh, is is not too sharp right uh, it's during 
the time of the uh, uh, Irish rebellion against uh, uh, England, uh, which turned out to be successful. And he's poor, he's stupid, he's in love, mm -hmm. and he's desperate. Right. Okay, that sounds like a familiar storyline to me. Uh, yeah, it was Victor McLaughlin, and I do remember him actually. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Victor McLaughlin plays the lead, the protagonist. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, we got to take a quick break. Here. Okay. When we come back, we're going to finish up on that. Also, we're going to do a little lightning round with our movie experts. See if we can stump them on some movie trivia. We're going to get to that right after this. If you're looking for, you know, uh, I don't know why I saw the Quiet Man years ago. Yeah. But on Nip and on uh, TV, I am seeing repetitively entry The Quiet Man with Michael Caine. Oh, they're making it. Did they remake it? I don't know if it's well, even the same story. Well, there are movies with the same titles, so I don't know. Um, yeah, the titles, I think, are like uh, book titles. Yeah, you can't. They can't be copyrighted. You can't copyright, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, the Informer, 1935. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think, I wouldn't think that uh, they would do a remake of that, but shoot, they, they remade uh, uh, True Grit, so. True that, and it was good. Yeah, and it was good. I thought it was better. Well, he made a film for called Godfather. We believe in celebrating the Lord. Our staff and trainers are dedicated to your health and fitness. For three hours a day, 365 days a year. You can find us on our website, Facebook, and Instagram. We're located next to Urgent Care at 101 South Beeline Highway, Sweet Bee. All right, so we have about 30 seconds left. Is there something more you want to do on John? Oh, yeah, we barely touched the surface. Yeah, we can do Yeah, somebody calls in. Somebody calls in for trivia. Well, I'm not just, I mean, I'm not. I'm looking more at stuff than you rather than them at this point. We've only got, uh, we've got about nine minutes left on the end of here. But, um, let's go figure out what we're going to do next. Five minutes in front of, excuse me, ten minutes in front of uh, 10 o'clock, 85 degrees. And this morning uh, on Rim Country Forum, as we do on Fridays, talking with your hometown movie guys and Tina and Andy in with us. And we'll hope to have uh, Craig back with us next week. Again, he's busy down at the Sawmill Theaters this morning. And we're also taking calls from you at 474-2427. And with that, let's take another one. Hi, you're on Rim Country Forum. Good morning. Hello there, how you doing? Okay. Yes. And what would she be best known for? I'm drawing a blank personally. Yes. The, yes. A, a better a better version. Yes. turning the tables on us. We're supposed to be stumping you. And here I am. I am so stumped. A, a boulevard in what town? Oh, she left. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that, uh, now we're never going to no. know. No, we can say whatever yeah. we want now. Yeah, really, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, well, uh, let's see. What's a good boulevard? Oh, jeez. Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Boulevard. Hollywood Boulevard. Hollywood Boulevard. Wow. Well, <laughs> all right, so. Hey, Al, uh, call back and let us know if we're wrong. Call back, because we don't know. All right, and yeah. uh, at any rate, we're, we're running low on time so here. I have a trivia from the John Ford movie. Okay. Okay. In um, the Informer, oh, I think she's calling back. I'll let, let, let you take that call, and then we'll go for it. Yeah. Thanks for calling Room Country Forum. Carriage. Who was the actor driving the carriage in The Quiet Man? Uh, um, Dang. Man, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Know. Do you know the answer, caller? Uh -huh. Right. Uh, uh, 
we do, we do. Thank you for asking. I wanted to talk about it. It's Grease. Oh wow, the music yes. of Grease. Yes, with, with Tom, uh, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. Please come, come early, buy popcorn. It's uh, a week from tomorrow. Well, and seeing, uh, not only you know being able to see it on the big screen, yeah. but a lot of great music in there and on the sound system at the Sawmill Theaters, that's oh, going to yeah. be a fun thing. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. So if you could be any character from Greece, uh, Andy, who would it be? Oh, Olivia and John. <laughs> and he was never seen well, again. these days we can arrange that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Might even get it paid for by government funds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've, got a, I've got a trivia for you uh, from uh, The Quiet Man. All right. Uh, a, a guy named uh, uh, Winston Hooch uh, was the cinematographer. Uh, oh. This guy, this guy was fabulous. He won four Oscars. Winston Hooch. Yeah, it's H H O C H. Hawk. 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 Hooch. There's no double O. Okay. Uh, Hawk. Uh, his uh, uh, one one of the movies that he uh, cinematographed uh, was called um, uh, Darby Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Oh, I remember that. And Darby O'Gill and the Little People is important in uh, cinema history for what reason? Who? Who? I remember Who? the movie and I don't remember the question. I'm the drawing a complete blank. I don't know. It was the breakthrough movie for Sean Connery. Ew! was his first uh, successful leading role. He'd done, he'd done a bunch of stuff uh, in theater he, and he had had a, a lot of uh, kind of walk-ons uh, and some little movies but this was his first uh, breakthrough role. I'm thinking soon. of a James Bond movie, but I don't know what he. What is it? Well, that was that's about Doctor No. But that's, about, this, is pre, this is well, pre. <laughs> this was pre Doctor No. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be Gill. Don't be Darby O'Gill. Darby O'Gill and the little, little people. people. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. A it's a it's a, a charming little movie. It's a yeah. little Irish movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the same cinematographer that worked for. Uh, <clears throat> John Ford and the Quiet Man. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Hey, got another caller on the line, uh, four and a half minutes in front of the hour. Hi, you're on Room Country Forum. Good morning. <gasps> oh, you're terrible. Give us the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and there She's she as bad as we are. It's I'm not I'm not liking this. I'm gonna have to I want to be the bad boy. I'm gonna have to do some research <laughs> on that real quick. Hey, we've only got uh, about four minutes left here. Hey, I got a question about uh, Grapes of Wrath. Oh, yeah? Yes, Grapes of Wrath, which was a John Ford. Right. Starred Henry Fonda. Right. There was a, uh, uh, an actor in uh, Grapes of Wrath, John Carradine, and he had two very famous sons who were, became famous in their own right. Who were they? Is it Caradine or Caradine? Well, I think sure. it was, I don't know. And one of them went, went on to be the Kung Fu dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah really. Um, yes, Grasshopper. I'm trying to remember his first name. Uh, when you can uh, snatch the pills from my David. David was the, the, was the Kung Fu, and right. Keith Caradine was also oh, very famous. Very he good. was good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a uh, little known fact, John Caradine, late in his uh, uh, career, played in a movie called Astro Zombies. <laughs> Oh, I Six Degrees of Zombiedom, brought to you by Andy McKinney. All right, we've got three minutes left. We're going to get into the lightning round, see if we can stump our uh, movie experts. All right, here we go. Uh, which war movie won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 2009? Which war movie won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 2009? Was it The Hurt Locker? It was. Very good. All right. All when, right. when I reviewed that, I said that it was uh, uh, the best war movie ever made. Wow. Better than uh, uh, all, all Quiet on the Western no, Front. Saving Private Ryan. Better than Saving Private Ryan. No. Wow. Okay, Duke yeah. it out. Wasn't, wasn't as spectacular as Saving Private Ryan. Food fight. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I'm but anyway, that's what I said in my review. I'm going to still go with, with your <coughs> platoon or Hamburger Hill. Anyway, uh, what was the name of the second Indiana Jones movie released in 1984? Uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Very good. Which actor starred in the 1961 movie The Hustler? Paul Newman. Very good. In which year were the Academy Awards or Oscars first presented? Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, There's a tough one. Okay, no, I'll, I'll be 29. able to... 29? Exactly, oh, 1929. Good for you. Gotcha. Very good. Uh, <coughs> 
After all, Tomorrow is Another Day is the last line from which movie that won the Academy Award oh. for Best Picture in 1939? On with, with the, the wind. wind. That's right. Yes. Uh, which movie features Bruce Willis as John McClane, a New York police officer, taking on a gang of criminals in a Los Angeles skyscraper on Christmas Eve? Die Hard. Hard. That was easy. Uh, what is the name of the Hobbit played by Elijah Wood in the Lord of the Rings movie? Frodo. What's his last name? Baggins. Baggins. Very good. All right, which uh, which is of the Baggins family? Yes, yes. the Baggins. Clan. I'm not sure if you know. You guys might almost be movie experts. <laughs> now, which actress played uh, Katniss Everdeen in the Hunger Games movie? Uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, that's right. The, the wonderful yes. Jennifer she Lawrence. There you go. Uh, yes. Just so, at a, least in movies. Yes, yeah, spectacular, she's spectacularly person, good, she's good, really actress. good actress. Yeah. And her uh, her, uh, her boyfriend. Uh, uh, Huff. Guy that plays uh, anyway. Uh, uh, he uh, he starred in one of the great zombie movies of all time, Warm Bodies. Uh, warm Bodies. <laughs> warm Bodies. Cool brains. All right, your last uh, question because we're almost out of time here. What's the name of the kingdom where the 2013 animated movie Frozen is set? I don't know. Stop me. Don't know. Arendelle. Yeah, no idea. I'm not, actually, I'm, for some reason, I've, I've never seen that. That's oh, the Boulevard, Shea, Lafayette, Drinkwater, or Exeter. Oh, it's got to be one of those, huh? Yeah, Michelle, Michelle just She's handed the, always, This is not me. Okay? Always this doing a great Michelle. job coming up Michelle with the information behind Michelle is really a wise scene. woman. Hey, unfortunately, that's all the time we have this morning. No, we're going to talk some more. <laughs> Hey, it's been brought to you. I'll turn off their microphones. Brought to you by Banner Face <laughs> Medical Center. George Henry Plumbing, Heating and Cooling at your service, cleaning and tree service, ITV Group, Computer Services, Anytime Fitness, and Hospitality Wireless. You're listening to Rim Country Radio, KMOG Pace, and it's time.